Hello, I'm Heidi Upton and greetings from New York City. This brief presentation is intended to introduce to you as an overview only some foundational material regarding Maxine Green's philosophical thinking and the connection of this to processes of aesthetic education and encounters with works of art. As some of you may know, Aesthetic education was developed over some years at what was then called Lincoln Center Institute, or LCI. Maxine was a philosopher in residence there. Her commitment to the power of the arts, to meaningful encounters with works of art, to bring people into alignment with their own lives, their own place in the world, energized all of us teaching artists at the time to find ways to bring teachers and learners into engagement with works of art through experiential, interactive, and personally relevant work. This slide provides an outline of AE practice processes intended to help educators to create a plan of study around a work of art from the first step of choosing such a work through the brainstorming and inquiry process, and then to the work of art experience itself, and finally, the all important reflection piece. I include this slide as I was inspired by hearing um, an interview recently with Irish poet Michael Longley. Uh, it was on a podcast called On Being with Krista Tippett, and the episode was called On the Vitality of Ordinary Things. And I include it because it aligns so well with Maxine's approach to aesthetic encounters with works of art. The idea that encounters with works of art tune us up, helping us develop our attention, our noticing skills in our lived lives, as Maxine would put it, was powerful. I'm happy to provide a link to this interview if, if anybody is interested. This excerpt from uh, Variations on a Blue Guitar in a chapter called Notes on Aesthetic Education provides such evidence from Maxine of a connection in thinking as Maxine explains how we can have aesthetic encounters in our everyday lives on a street corner in the city, for example, bringing our attention to the present moment, the shapes, the colors, the sounds that are all around us. And if you go further into this chapter, you will find how she describes that encounters with works of art are similar to such personal encounters with the world, similar as they are filled with aesthetic qualities put there intentionally by artists for us to consider. And here, for example, is such a work of art, a painting by Ralph Fazanello titled New York City, where we might bring ourselves to the experience of the city but transformed in some way through the artist into our own lives as we enter into a world filled with aesthetic qualities intentionally created for, for us by the artist for just such personal encounters. And here, We can see that such encounters with works of art are situated, as Maxine would say, because we come to them from our own personhood, wide awake or as awake as we can be. Maxine wrote about wide awakeness in Wide Awakeness and the Moral Life, which is a chapter in Landscapes of Learning. Here's a screenshot from the first two pages, where she begins by connecting the term coined by Thoreau with the thinking of Alfred Schutz, as she asks us to consider just what it takes to begin the process of awakening to one's life to the world around us. Reading Maxine is an adventure, as she brings us into encounters with the thinking of others who have inspired and informed her own thinking. Here, inspired by Maxine's writing on wide awakeness, I include images of references she makes in just the first two pages of this chapter. It's, it's, a, it's an adventure reading, Maxine. Um, and there are many more references as one continues reading the rest of the chapter. Um, it is possible to be led into reading Maxine as inspired by snippets, and excerpts, but importantly, one must go to the readings in their entirety. Here, for example, is a term 
under examination from another chapter in Landscapes of Learning, fixity, which is important, the notion that we become fixed in a world we take as a given and about which we may think we have no power and no control, as Maxine writes in the chapter Wide Awakeness in the Moral Life. But the idea of fixity is something she borrows from Sartre. And in this other chapter in Landscapes of Learning, entitled The Artistic Aesthetic and Curriculum, where on page 172, she includes a lengthy excerpt from Sartre's The Artist and His Conscience, she compares Sartre's thinking to John Dewey's in the context of fixity and fluidity. I invite you to pursue. I do not consider myself able in this forum to meaningfully delve into much of this complex philosophical material, but let me offer Maxine's further thinking on the subject of fixity and the ability to move between and among provinces of meaning, as Schutz calls them, from a piece called Multiple Realities, referenced in this same chapter, go read it. She opens to us the worlds of such amazing thinkers, inviting us to consider reality itself, our own interpreted lives through the lenses of others' thinking, lending us her own expertise so graciously. Works of art tune us up, as Longley said. They awaken us, as Maxine suggests, if we are open and ready for the adventure, however, however uncomfortable that adventure might be. Aesthetic education, the processes of AE, grounded in such profound thinking as related here in this presentation, and there is so much more to think about, helps us all sorts of explorers that we are to consider possibilities, landscapes suddenly made visible where before there seemed to be a brick wall. This is a photo of teaching artists celebrating Ma with Maxine after a Valentine's Day concert that took place quite a few years ago now. Adventurers all, it has been my pleasure to share with you these thoughts, begging your forgiveness, as Maxine would do if I went on too long, and I wish you exciting travels. <laughs>